Geographic, I'm sure, is a brand that everyone in this room is familiar with. We've been around now for 124 years. And as you all know, we're a, we're a photo-driven magazine um, with, with brilliant writers and photographers. And, but we're a visually driven magazine, and oftentimes you can't photograph things, as we've seen today. Um, and you know, one of the themes that's being touched on is how do you explain a process or a concept or an event when you can't photograph it, photograph it in a visual magazine? So that's where we turn to uh, my little part of the magazine where I live, um, where we produce graphics and maps and art, and now increasingly um, interactive graphics and maps and art and imagery. And so we, we draw, we paint, we model, uh, we sculpt. And so I'm going to show you just a couple of those projects, just a little background. These are just tiny examples of things um, in the front part of our magazine the ways that we employ uh, art and graphics. On the left, you have um, a study that came out on acupuncture points in rats. And it's, um, we did have photography of these, uh, it's actually a study out of George Washington here in town, and we went over and watched them you know, sticking the rats. And it made for a terrible photo, because in order to stick the rats, they had to be in a sock, because that's the only way the, rocks, the, the rats felt comfortable. So we said, okay, let's, let's employ some art here. And so we, we worked with a, a Brazilian artist, Walmar Correa, who did this piece for us. Another one, um, a small story on the right here on, on bumblebees and about how they, they learn the shortest path between flowers. And they'll, they'll come up with a root. And the more times that they um, fly around that root, they'll find the shortest path and, and can do it faster and faster. So again, we had some photographs of bumblebees and flowers, but it doesn't really look like much other than a bumblebee and a flower. So that's where our, our, um, one of our graphic editors, Lawson Parker, made this small diagram, but which, which explains the process. And of course, we have our long legacy of cartography. Um, this was for a recent uh, feature story on tsunamis. And so we were able to show um, through cartography, you know, the ring of fire where tsunamis, earthquakes happen. And then on the left, really talk about, you know, what are the, the mechanics of an, earth, or of an earthquake and then a tsunami what causes that big wave, and then get into some case studies about looking at the Japanese tsunami and what would happen if something similar happened um, in the US. So now I'm going to just um, jump into two projects that we've done. Uh, the first one it was a, story, a cover story in 2008 on Neanderthals and new science regarding Neanderthals. And you know, when you're working with an extinct creature that you can't photograph, you can only look at so many photos of bones um, before they become redundant and repetitive. So we needed a new way to visualize the story. Um, the text was incredibly compelling. The photos of bones were great, but we wanted to see a Neanderthal. So we thought we could make one. We could do that. So we, we called um, a couple paleo artists who are identical twins in the Netherlands, Netherlands <coughs> and they're, um, the Kenneth brothers. And we talked to them, and they said they would build us a life-size model sculpture. Um, we call her we call her a sculpture. We call her a model. She, we also call her an information graphic in a three-dimensional form. Um, and, and so we started this process. They sent us some very early sketches. These are from uh, their student in the Netherlands. You could see they were making her very feminine. She's almost coy. Um, anatomically correct in these sketches, but we said, you know, part of this study was that Neanderthals and the women were engaged in hunting. They could tell by their fossils and their bones that they're hunting, so we said, we need an aggressive pose. So this is our, uh, our actually our staff artist, Fernando Baptista, who did the cover that I showed in the first slide on Easter Island, um, posing as a Neanderthal woman <laughs> in, in kind of an aggressive stance, what we thought we would like her to be. We sent these uh, photographs, which we just you know, did on a phone in the office, to the Kinnis brothers, and they started back from scratch. So again, you know, we, we always start with pencil. That's where we start. Um, and the, the sketch progressed and progressed, and this is very close to where we ended up with Wilma. That's what we lovingly call her, Wilma. Um, so then the next step is, OK, we have a concept. What are we going to do? We needed something for them to start with. So we bought a Neanderthal skeleton um, from Bone Clones. Um, 
you can see that you could buy the whole skeleton for $13,700 or buy it kind of piecemeal. We wanted it piecemeal because we wanted to build her. Um, unfortunately, they only sold uh, male casts of fossils and we wanted to make her female. So we had to buy the pieces separately and then push, put them together um, and, and cut out of every vertebrae about a millimeter to make her smaller. So these are, again, and this also just cracks me up, so I put it in here, that if you want to buy a human skull, you can also get a premium carrying case for it, <laughs> so you can take it with you for only $95. So once we got these bones together, we sent, uh, and they were shipped to the Netherlands, to the Kinnis brothers, they started putting them together. Do they saw them apart? They're sculptors, and again, this was all done with scientists um, sending sketches back and forth and back and forth. Um, painstakingly put together, modeled, getting that pose that Fernando showed to us. The muscles come next, bit by bit. There she's looking like herself. You can see the two brothers, and you know it's interesting to work with these identical twins because they can't tell you what, which one of them did one part and which one of them did the other. You'll see them sketch, and one will start, and the other will finish. So they really do do these together. This is when they've got her cast here. Give her a spin. And this is when she's almost finished um, without eyebrows. So here she's done. The one interesting thing, um, right before we went to press, the whole time we had made her with blue eyes. And right before we went to press, we discovered that uh, a new study came out, I believe it was in, in science, uh, stating that the blue eye gene came much later than Neanderthals were around. So we had to, um, in the photograph, Wilma, as she stands as a sculpture, has, still has blue eyes, but on the photograph for our cover, we had to switch her eyes so you can see her eye color there changed. And so this was our, the opening spread for our um, article. Now, to make that photograph, we um, didn't want to just shoot her anywhere. We wanted to take her to where her bones were found in Spain. So uh, the photographer, Joe McNally, you see him there working. That's one of the Kenneth brothers in the back. I can't tell you which one. Um, took her and built this set. Here's, I'm just going to flip through some of his takes. This is at night when... Um, our art director and creative director went to shoot her. They, they had to find a hotel that had a garage where they could store Wilma at night. They wrapped her in bubble wrap, had to crawl across some fields and barbed wire fences to get her to the cave. Found an angry Spanish bull along the way. She goes. And then she's set up, and that's Joe, photographer, lighting her. And this is the actual cave where um, the fossil was found. There's some um, real science going on, <laughs> bones. And so here, here she is. We, we, we toured her around northern Spain. This is just some stunning shots. We also took her into a um, village because part of the idea was to photograph her with a modern human to show some of the morphological differences. So we found someone from, who lived in that same region of Spain, a woman there who to photograph them side by side, to sh point out the differences in their face. So you can see uh, her forehead, her chin, are very different. This was, um, I put this in because I think it's funny, Joe put it, Joe th had some fun with her, but now it's actually relevant because Wilma, Wilma actually last year ran in Playboy magazine. They picked up one of the photographs because they wanted to do a story on Neanderthals, so. Now the photo is more relevant. <laughs> and then this, finally, you know, we had this great photography, this wonderful piece of scientifically correct art, and we wanted to explain it. So Juan Velasco, um, our art director, did this uh, graphic showing the differences between the Neanderthal and uh, human skeletons. And the interesting thing is they've never found a complete skeleton for a female. So he color-coded these bones based on where they were found. That's how it ran. It's three pages, P pull out um, or fold out, gatefold in the magazine. The next um, story I'm going to talk through recently was one I 
got the pleasure of working on. Um, it was our April cover story, so it ran just a couple uh, months ago. It was the 100th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. And, um, you know, Geographic funded the expedition, and one of our explorers in residence, Bob Ballard, found the wreck of the Titanic, so it's, it's a topic near and dear to us, and we want to do something for the anniversary. Um, one of our brand new explorers in residence is actually James Cameron, who, yes, he's a film director, but he is also, um, he's very much an explorer and has dove the wreck of the Titanic more times than anyone else. So we, we partnered with him and had this idea that we were going to show um, how the Titanic broke up. This was a four panel gatefold in the April issue, a tear out poster actually. Um, and this is a very early sketch uh, in which we worked with uh, Cameron's team. He works with um, primarily a, a gentleman named Park Stevenson who's he's a retired engineer from the Navy who now works for um, Boeing in San Diego and he has a fascination with the Titanic and he par partnered with um, Jim for the original Titanic movie and kind of did, they've done models and models and models on how the ship broke up. So Parks is really, was really the, the engineer, the physicist behind this, but he didn't have the tools to visualize it in the way we did. So it was a great partnership. This was an early sketch. Um, we hired an Australian artist who we've worked with quite a bit. His name is Nick Kalatarakis. And he worked with Parks to create these models and we had to whittle, Parks wanted to put 33 steps of how the, the boat broke up because of, or the ship, sorry. I've been corrected many times. Of how the ship broke up and, and put all those steps in there and we had to convince him that he had to get just the crucial steps, just the crucial steps. So that's where you need, the role of a graphics editor comes in. This is just, I don't expect you to read this, but these are just the kind of emails we got from JC is Jim Cameron um, every day we'd send a sketch back and forth, back and forth. I tried last night to go through, through and count in my old email archives how many versions we did and I stopped at 73, um, just versions back and forth with, with Cameron and the scientists, the engineers. Um, Parks, the, the scientist I was talking about, had uh, modeled the Titanic in this way, but you can see it's a very crude model. He, you can't, you know, the break is straight down. It, it's not, it's accurate, but it doesn't have the detail nor the aesthetic finesse we wanted. So we, we used his images and uh, Nick modeled further. This is just an example of, um, we had great controversy at the very end about that f number two funnel. Which way did it fall? When did it come? And every detail was examined and you know, when exactly would the lights go out because they were attached with those cables from the funnel. And so you know, Nick, our artist, had sent us these. I had to send them to the team of scientists. Scientists came back with this on the left and so then we made the adjustments on the right. This went on and on and on for months but at the end we ended up with this, with this beautiful gatefold, which is the first time that um, really physics and engineering had been applied and, and then visualized in how the, the, the Titanic broke up. So two very, very different projects, but both um, I think a good example of how we as visual journalists are working with the scientific community and experts to really visualize and storytell in, in new ways. So thank you.